director here at Make Money Coaching Sports. And what we want to try to do today is we're going to ask you, Leo, a bunch of questions about the landscape of the private training industry in the UK. I know he's spoken to a lot of coaches already that live in the UK that are doing private training. And so, Leo, let's just kind of get right into it. With your experience so far of talking to a lot of coaches that are doing private training or group training, what do you see are like maybe the top one or top two biggest problems that you notice with trainers that are specifically in the UK right now? Yeah, hi Ben. Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. Um, apart from talking to coaches, um, I'm also out on the field every week. So I come across a lot of private trainers that I'm either coaching alongside or I get into conversations when, when I'm going to and from uh, the field. Um, yeah, so the two main things that I see is number one, uh, trainers are very sporadic and they don't really have set, set days, set time that they do their training. It's kind of like, they have all their parents on a text message and that text message goes out maybe on a Sunday, Sunday evening, and they ask parents, oh, are you free at this time? Are you free on that time, et cetera. So the relationship between the trainer and the client isn't, I would say, a very professional one. It's more like a personal relationship that, that they have. And the problem with that is that it's fine in the short term, but in the long term, if you're looking to grow and to scale a, a private training business, especially here in the UK, that model can break because parents get then get used to you being that way. And once parents get used to you being that way, it's very hard to change your, mm -hmm. your business model or your business system. So that's one thing. Coaches are very sporadic with, with how they, they train clients, with you know, the day they train, how they communicate, et cetera. Um, that's the first thing. So a lack of, I would say, organization is number one. And then the second one is most private trainers that are doing either like one-to-one -one or small group sessions, uh, they don't really have a proper business set up. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they they run it as more like a, a kind of like a side hustle where it's all done cash in hand um which again is is great but in the long term if you want to record like what's coming in what's going out um how your business is actually doing it's very hard to track and then also you run the risk of getting in trouble because obviously you're not declaring your your profits as income mm -hmm. so if you get caught then the fine could be very big so number one is lack of organization and number two i would say just just no real business uh, system uh, set up in, with within within the tra uh, trainer's business <music> Oh, 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 oh,